Well, these days, there are more and more people falling into panic because of all the major changes that are happening in the world. Not only the coronavirus, but the war in the economy and what's going to happen, and being separated from friends and family because of the virus. And so people are experiencing so many major changes in the world that for many people, that throws them into panic. And that means it's a problem that we human beings all have to deal with is that we begin to think we're a powerless victim, that we're a victim of the world, we're a victim of what's happening, we're a victim of uh, the other person, what they said or didn't say or did or didn't do, and we can fall into panic and worrying about the future. Now, the real problem of that is, is that we think that worrying and panic will help us. Now we have evidence in, in uh, the new science of quantum physics that whatever we are focusing on, we actually attract. And so I've even thought about writing a little book sometime, Don't Worry At Me being the title. Because we think if I'm worrying about my son or my daughter or my spouse or my parents or a friend or somebody, I'm helping them. No, what we now know from quantum physics is that our minds are all interconnected in what they call one unified field. And there's no such thing as a private thought. So my thoughts are, do, are creating my world, as physicists have put it. And so what we're not seeing is our own power, that I need to make sure that what I'm thinking is not the negative side, because we all have that human ego, which has been called many names through the centuries, the liar, the great deceiver, the wolf in sheep's clothing, and so on. But all that voice does is take us into the negative side of things. And it pretends to be helping us when it actually always does the opposite. And so when I fall into panic, I've just been listening to that voice. I've been listening to my voice fearing what's going to happen down the road. Or what if this happens? What if the economy fails? What if the virus spreads? Or what if I get sick and can't do my job? Is that ever going to help anybody? All it does is make us feel bad on one hand. Then secondly, as quantum physics is now saying, whatever I'm focusing on, I'm helping to increase. So when I have a negative thought about something, I'll ask myself a simple little thing as a solution here. Is this something I want to increase? Then I'll say, God, no way, this thing I'm worrying about, do I want that to increase? It's the opposite. Then I'll remind myself, because the scientists now tell us, whatever I focus on, I'm going to attract even more and help it to increase. So that's my, my inspiration to want to do something about those disturbing thoughts, those worry thoughts, those fear thoughts. And that's a time for me to do something to let them go. I might start by just letting go of the thoughts and changing them. And sometimes we can do that and sometimes they're more deeply embedded. Sometimes we can use a part of what's called the emotional freedom technique. That's touch or tap on some acupressure points while we're stating what emotion we're releasing. I'm releasing all anger. I'm releasing all, I mean, excuse, all fear. I'm releasing all anger, worry and obsessive concern and so on. Anxiety, shame and guilt. We can touch those different acupressure points and it just helps us focus a little bit more and stimulates that energy meridian inside us. And that's different when we can do that because then we're not stuck and worrying about that outcome, what the outcome is going to be. And thinking, I'm going to protect myself, but to realize that ego voice that we all have inside us, it's always telling us a lie and telling us the opposite of what's good for us and what helps us feel better. So if I can stop by seeing those thoughts that I have that are worry, that's fearful, that what's going to happen, what's the future going to be, how am I going to be, I'm attracting the negative as I do that. It's not helping me. But instead, I need to let go of that voice that stimulates the cortisol and adrenaline, which are the stress hormones in my body, and let myself think of other kind of solutions and ways I can calm myself, like taking some slow, deep breaths and just focusing on slowly breathing in and then totally breathing out. I might think of it as I'm breathing in peace. I might think of it as I'm breathing out fear or worry. Sometimes to add those in, some people like that, some don't, but it's one useful to some people. But if I can remind myself that if I stay stuck in the worry and fear and focus on that, that ego mind that we call the liar, the great deceiver is lying to me, telling me it's going to help somebody else or help me. And it never does. It just creates more stress and more pain and more fear. 
and causes me to attract more of that into my life. So that's why I need to become more conscious of my thoughts and the worry thoughts and they create that anxiety. Yes, in medicine they put labels and um, diagnosis on things. That's sometimes a little bit helpful, mostly not. Because just having a label on myself, I begin to identify with it. And that doesn't ever help. No, I need to see that the power is within me. Like in ancient Judaism, in the book of Genesis, it says, And God said, Let there be light, let there be firmament, let there be water. And then it says, And he created man in his own image and likeness. Well, I never heard that taught through most churches since then. So I'm created as a creator with my thoughts. And that was the wisdom of somebody thousands of years ago. And now quantum physics is saying the same thing. And if we can look and see that our thoughts are acts of creation, but a lot of those are based on my early programming. We all have our programming that we had as little kids. We, had, we copied whatever our parents did. That's why we spoke the language we did, because they spoke a certain language and we learned it. They walk on all two feet, well, on two feet rather than all fours. Uh, do I read a story of a baby that was abandoned in Canada by a woman who was pregnant and it happened to be near a pack of wolves. She was discovered when she, about eight years later when a hunter was out in the woods running around with a pack of wolves on all fours like wolves making wolf sounds. That's a reminder to me how we all copy what's there when we were little kids. She copied the, the wolves like we copy what our parents do. If they do, talk lovingly, we copy that. If they talk angrily and putting each other down, we copy that. If we were neglected, we keep that with us. So we are in charge of our minds and our bodies, and we're in charge of whether we're disturbed. And I can take back my power by changing the way I see something, the way I interpret something, and use other tools to just increase relaxation, whether it's breathing exercises or meditations or things of that nature can always help too. Certainly, if you'd like to learn more about these methods or these tools or the combinations of them and how they work, I'll be glad to talk with you about it. You could contact me by phone or by email, or you could call me and we could make an appointment or two, and we could discuss it more in relation to your area, your issues, your problem areas, and what would be effective for you to do together. So I'd be happy to explore those things with you. I have a uh, people who want to come in person can see me in New York City or in Westport, Connecticut. Um, others may prefer to have s session by Zoom or telephone or FaceTime or things like that. So that's possible too, especially during this coronavirus situation. So whatever works for you is uh, I'm open to to explore with you. But I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have about what this therapy is like.